In my work, I travel a lot around Australia and overseas. Whenever in Australia, I catch one of the local, low-cost airlines. I managed to pay as little as $42 for a flight from Newcastle to Melbourne. It cost me more to catch the taxi than the airline flight. This particular airline shuttles people from Melbourne, Newcastle, Brisbane, and back again all day. They tell me they can turn a plane around in 20 minutes. Every time I catch a plane, it's exactly the same. The safety instructions, the lack of food, the seating, and the process. I quite like my time on short flights. I'm very happy to be a consumer. I actually don't want the aircraft captain to come and ask me what route to take or how high to fly the plane. I'm very pleased they have many controls in place, so it's the same nearly every time. I like that they've checklists up the front that they follow and the airplane staff understand how planes fly. There's mathematical equations they can rely on to work out payloads, speed and velocity to make it a safe trip every time. This is an example of the traditional model we've been using throughout the 20th century. This way of organising institutions concentrates on efficiency, trying to do things as quickly and as cheaply as possible. If the activity is well defined and replicated, then these models are great. However, people are not aeroplanes. The issue is not that the traditional model is not a good one, it's just not a good model for everything. Often it's the only model we know. So that's why we use it, as Maslow said. He that is good with a hammer tends to think everything is a nail. The traditional model may not be the best one for supporting older people or helping communities to grow strong, but every community has a different set of assets, dreams and hopes. A good life for an older person may look very different in Melbourne, Alice Springs, Mount Isa or Newtown. The traditional model aims to standardise services so they are efficient, easily replicated and risk free. To use this model we would assume that we know the best way of supporting older people in every community and circumstance, that the answers are clear and unambiguous. However, as we have discussed in session three, we are still trying to work out what the questions are. We are leading with an answer while we don't even know the questions. Take some time now to discuss the following questions. What does it mean for older people if we are using this cookie cutter approach to provide them with support? What does it feel like to work within such a system? People who have participated in these workshops have said the following. We sometimes provide services that nobody wants. We provide services that don't work for people. I feel like a number in a production line. It often doesn't meet their needs or it may just meet a small part of their needs. It makes people powerless. I feel frustrated I can't provide people with what they need. I have to break the rules to do my job. I don't have time to understand what people care about or want to have a great life. It's like forcing a square peg into a round hole. There's another way of organising, a much more relationship driven approach, which in our experience creates better outcomes, particularly where we need to be more flexible and respond to individual circumstance. The traditional way we provide support to older people is to explore their needs and then provide a service to clients and consumers. The answer is always a program. Here's an example. Rodney was an older man. His wife passed away a few years earlier. He lived by himself in a quaint cottage which he kept immaculately. Even with a white glove, you wouldn't find dust on his mantelpiece. Rodney was given a cleaning service through home care because that's what everyone needs, isn't it? Maria the cleaner would come once a week at 9.30 on a Tuesday. Even though there was no cleaning to do, Rodney had done it already. Every week, Rodney would offer Maria a cup of tea and freshly baked biscuit. Maria always said no, because her job was to clean the house. Another approach for Maria would have been to lead with the question, what would be life-giving for Rodney? In this story, nobody listened, nobody asked, where are the tea cosies? Who was Rodney? What were his assets? What is his story? 
How could he have contributed to the life of other people? How could he be a citizen? The more successful pathways knows that people are the answer, not programs. In our experience, organisations are best able to flexibly support older people in life-giving ways are relationship-driven, externally focused and non-hierarchical. These organisations are learning organisations that spend time exploring the what as well as the why. Here's an example of two types of organisations, the traditional institutional model and a more associational model. Most organisations are a bit of both and lie along a continuum. It seems to us that most organisations that support older people are too much on the institutional side and not enough on the associational side. Just take a minute by yourself and reflect on where your organisation fits on this continuum.